I think that we all have this strange, morbid obsession with ghost stories, which is why they've just endured for so long. Some find them hopeful, you know, because it proves that there's something beyond what's here. And some find them terrifying for just the same reason. If I were to say that night school had core pillars, it's really mixing a sense of wonder and danger and humor together. That means we can tell lots of different types of stories. It just also means that we want it to feel real and authentic and that we, just like real life, there's always, you know, right after the worst moment, you might have a great moment and vice versa. One thing I do with collaborators a lot is we essentially talk about a project and then share mixtapes. And so Sean Crankle and I did this. Not only did we have several of the same artists on each of our tapes, oh, I think we even had one or two of the same songs. Uh, I would describe the aesthetic of Oxygen Free as it's kind of like a, a stylized version of the Pacific Northwest. It's been like painted in like a, a very minimalistic way, but also has like this very watercolory vibe to it. It's juxtaposed within like the nature of the horror and the supernatural events that happen in the island. It doesn't immediately cue you in that you're about to experience a ghost story or a story that has some darker themes to it. The way it's represented is very storybook-like and very gentle and very soft. It's almost deceptive when you do hit the ghost story uh, in the game. When you open up the game, it feels like you're being completely transported into another world that's just kind of drenched in this fog and all this atmosphere. It's really like playing inside an illustration. At night school, we really pride ourselves in like the different art styles that we create for each game. Seeing something so handmade is kind of rare to see in a lot of games. Uh, a lot of times these worlds do feel more procedurally generated, but there's something nice about seeing something that's been individually painted, as, as painstaking as it is, but very wonderful to experience. It's just the vibe, you know, it's such a strong and unique visual style and feel to it that it's really, really beneficial to just kind of soak in that vibe and help the music enhance it in any way it can. Since the characters are much older in Oxenfree 2, I think we really wanted to lean into their experiences in past life. I think having a bit of like that wear and tear or a bit of wrinkle here and there or just folds within the backpack. Again, like with posture and animation and that also could be another signifier to show a character's life experiences. I think in Oxenfree 1, it felt like you're experiencing walking through a static painting, but in Oxenfree 2, we're thinking about bringing in more aspects that can help to make the environment feel alive. So movement in the trees and lighting that comes off from our portals and adding to the immersive experience. First, we're gonna have a little fun tonight, folks. 